All right, let's get right down to business episode three of Up a Profit Show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And here we go. Let's get on a roll, a roll of film, the motion picture, actual film. Now, I'm not shooting on actual film, obviously, nor am I recording audio on actual audio tape. It's all digital here, but film, the umbrella, the big thing, film, 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 actual medium of film. It is actually dying. We're losing it. Slowly but surely, we're losing it. We've lost it with distribution pretty much, unfortunately. The 70 millimeter stuff is great. IMAX, oh my gosh, amazing. Christopher Nolan, Paul Thomas Anderson, these guys are keeping it going. But film is at least changing. Now that it's become ones and zeros, it's different. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back for a second. I mean, seriously, let's really talk about the motion picture. I mean, the real actual motion pictures, the motion pictures, because it is plural, but it is singular. 24 frames a second. 24 frames a second. That's pretty much what our eyes sees ish silent film it was 16 frames per second you shoot 120 if you want to do slow-mo 30 is kind of the standard digital 60 but what does that mean that means individual pictures motion pictures individual pictures 24 a second what does that do that creates an illusion an illusion. I'm not talking movie magic. Movie magic this is a different thing. Movie magic is, you know, costumes and makeup and lighting and camera and, and all that stuff. But actual film, actual photography, the actual thing that you're implanting the image on and the sound, of course, but sync sound, that didn't even come until like the 20s. I mean, we had like 30 years of silent film, really. And 16 frames a second looked a little weird from now, but it was incredible. The illusion, that illusion, it is truly an illu- like an actual real illusion. I don't mean to say that it's not a thing that exists. It is. It's the film, the actual film, or the ones and the zeros now with the digital. But, but the actual thing that is shown, that is very much so real. It's just... We're not seeing it as it is. It is 24 frames a second. What happens is our brain interprets it and shows it to us as motion. It's a trick. An illusion. An actual illusion. That's the thing with film. That's what makes it so unique. You know, when they first had the Nickelodeons, yeah, a nickel to watch a rip, a strip, a rip, maybe a rip of film a strip of film there were so many stories they had this uh uh, one that they replayed of a train coming right at camera people freaked out ran from the theater the illusion is so strong not to go into this kind of strange tangent but the nazis knew how strong the illusion of film is propaganda they use it for propaganda the illusion of film is extremely strong Look at us today. I mean, look at us today. Honestly, let's get away from actual. Let's look at, look at digital for a second. Screens, 80% or something like that. I saw some statistic. It was like 80% of our days are watching screens, watching film, quote unquote. We're in an illusion. I mean, right now I'm shooting on digital, multiple cameras. Audio is rec- being recorded digitally as well. It's all ones and zeros. It's different, but it's still the same. It used to be we would run from the theater if the train was coming. We didn't know what it was. Now we don't know what reality is. Not to say that I don't love me some motion pictures. (laughs) But and that's the thing. Reading is changing. The novel is incredible. It's wonderful. And I want to write a novel, but I'm being thrust into filmmaking still. I'm still making movies. I've been making movies for 15 years. For 15 years, I've been making movies. And now I'm finally ready for a big feature film. I love film. But the way our brains are now, we're all up in these screens and up in this digital. And I want to get back to film. 
analog versus digital. I want to get back to the idea of analog life. You know what I mean? I mean, that is personal. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say anything to anybody like, oh my gosh, you are too watching too much content. I'm making content right now for you to listen to and watch. Okay. I, I understand. I'm with you. But I want you to get back to the idea of analog thinking. You know, I'm trying to get back to the idea of analog thinking and I want to shoot on actual film back at some point once I have that kind of money. But now I just have the kind of money I can shoot on digital. I can make a feature film. I have found money to make this first flagship project for MSI Films. I'm going to do it. Uh, Sometimes against my will. 90% of the day is against my will, it seems like. Because the thing for me is I just want to do God's will. Now, even if you're not even into God, okay, the universe is will. Okay, the, the my inspiration. I just want to go with my pure inspiration. However you want to put it. However you want to... However you want to put it, I put it as God is making me make this movie that I've been inspired to write. My 10th, 11th, technically 10th full screenplay. And and I found the money. And I'm starting a company, MSI Films. I'm making a podcast. I'm doing a behind-the-scenes documentary. The whole shebang. I'm doing all, the whole thing. I'm doing it all because I'm inspired by this medium of film this very very young medium wow wow like really think about how young it is i mean 150 years no no no. photography is 150 years photography is 150 years audio recording maybe i think even later than that but i think it came before the motion picture what was it that first thing look it up it's the it's the horse Right, they had some debate, some um, Moy Bridge, Moy Bridge, some debate about okay, no, 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 the the horse has uh, uh, flying through the air at some point uh, or something. Blah, blah, blah. Look it up. That's the first film, and then it went from there. Thirty years of silent film, and then talkies, talkies came in. The evolution of film has been incredible, and now look at it now with all the screens, all the content. Everybody, everybody, look at right now. You might even be listening or watching this on your device. What is your device? Your device is your camera, your your photo camera, your video camera, your audio recording. You are a, a filmmaker. You're a, you're a photographer. Everybody, everybody now. Did you know that everybody is a photographer and a filmmaker? That's and that's only what in the last five years, ten years of YouTube maybe, you know, fifteen years. Wow, though, 150 years, maybe uh, 125. And the incredible advances, it's changed so much. And now people are talking about it being dead. I, 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 and I feel you. The feature film, oh, the feature film has changed so much that in a way it's dying or evolving very quickly into something else. But and that's been a very, very large part of my fear when it comes into to making a flagship project, which is a feature film, is that independent cinema has changed. Now, there's a lot of great outlets now because everybody wants content. But the reality of the situation is that you need to hit a market. You really do. You need to hit a market. If you just make a good movie, that is not guaranteed to get you the second movie. It used to be guaranteed to get you the second movie. Honestly, independent film in the night—I mean, uh, heyday in the nineties, oh, the heyday of the seventies. But but the but the truth is, yes, it used to be that if you made one great, even decent movie, you got to make a second one. Sometimes you got to make a big second one with big budget, and you had a lot of creative control. You know, I mean, that's what happened to Kevin Smith and and Richard Linklater, who, by the way, uh, Richard Link, uh, Kevin Smith was inspired by Richard Linklater and Christopher Nolan was inspired by Kevin Smith. Yes, absolutely. Spike Lee was in, was um, um, inspired by all of them. All those guys, all those guys. But the scene is different now. And I'm not saying it's just it's because. You know, you, you sell movies to streaming, and I love streaming. I'm not against Netflix. I wanted, that would be, how amazing would it be to be on Netflix? I'd be the fucking boss, holy crap, that would be amazing to be on Netflix. I hope you one day see my movie on Netflix. Oh my gosh, Netflix plug, that's amazing. I'm not against the stream. The streaming is great. The digital watching on your phone. Uh, uh, uh. The feature film, 
the feature film has changed. It's evolved. Most people don't even really want to see many feature films, certainly not that many indies. There are the cinephiles. There are the cinephiles. But I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Let's be honest. Let's be honest here. Let's get right down to business. Let's get right down to business. Let's be honest. I like seeing the big, bu- big budget movies too. The $100 million movies. I Black Panther. I want to see it again. I'm going to throw down my money for these big action movies, maybe these big thrillers, even these big dumb comedy. Oh, I love a big dumb comedy now. I, those are theater experience movies for me. I see a lot less of the indie films, the size of films that I'm making, especially. And because I'm making hundreds of thousands of dollars type of movie, not millions. I don't have that yet. The idea is to make a great movie that hits something <laughs> that I could sell that gets back so I can have a company and get to the next movie and then the next movie and, and just keep up in my game. And that's that's the That's the business plan for my investors, mostly my family, (laughs) whom I love very, very much. Oh, Lord, do I love them. But it is a business I'm starting. I want to make feature films. I'm still in love with the feature film. The actual, not just the style, like cinematic style. Movies are time and storytelling. They're a very unique set. It's a very unique skill set screenwriting for the feature film. I'm not talking about cinematic television. Cinematic television, so that's where it's at. That's what I should be doing. I should be writing pilots. Uh, I have a lot of wonderful friends and colleagues that are destroying television right now. I'm so excited for them. And I should be doing that. <laughs> or I should take all the money I've saved and raised for the last six years and put a down payment on a house. This is what I should do. I should not invest in the feature film because the feature film is dying. The feature film is changing a lot. I mean, even something like Get Out, which was like one location-ish, that was $4.5 million. It, t- it costs money to make movies because film, film, let's get back to film. Film is expensive. And yes, even if you shoot on digital, it's expensive. The medium of filmmaking, the filmmaking medium is the most expensive medium in the history of art. Aside from architecture, and architecture doesn't really fully count because architecture is basic for human is basic human need, shelter. But art is an emotional basic. But you can actually live, and your heart can continue to beat if you if you don't have film. And yet, oh, we spend so much money on them because they're so amazing. They're so visceral. It's so visceral. That illusion of the motion picture is so visceral. It's right there. It's right there and you can see it. It may be an illusion, but it's so real. And of course, the audio with it, the sound and the picture. Yes, it's a passive. It's passive. That's one thing. That's the main difference I really think with when it comes to books. The the thing about novels, obviously, yes, you can. Storytelling is very different, and you can do a lot of different things with that. Whereas movies, there's it's a very specific. You really want to tell a story in this way in a movie. Um, but the I think the biggest difference really is the fact that reading a book is active, and watching content is passive. Active versus passive. That's active versus passive. That's a whole nother podcast episode to get into because active versus passive when it comes to art, life, whatever, is so important to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Most people just do very, very passive activities. And I used to be one of them. I used to be ding, ding, ding. This guy used to be a giant passive man. And I still watch a lot of content, but oh man, I try to be active. I want to read more. Ooh, I really want to read more. And I actually am very, very much so interested in not writing a screenplay for a very long time. Once I'm done with this. So the next time I'm going to really do a big writing project, probably be a book, probably be a novel. Oh, but I got to make this movie. Oh, I got to make this movie. Newly retitled, the original title, the OG title of my movie that I'm making for profit. Profit like Isaiah. The movie's about a guy who is haunted by this demon. An angel comes to him in the first act, presents him with, some tasks he's got to do, including taking down the corruption in the small town he's in. And 
it's about the back and forth. Does he believe the angel? Does he go with the demon? What, what the angel demon on the shoulder? And um, it's classic. It's archetypal. It's been with me for years. I'm finally getting the fourth draft out, and it's coming together so well. I'm I I don't want to jinx it, but I think this is the draft, and I am being forced, mostly against my will, to do this by the one true God whom I adore and whom I do the will of only. I only do the will of God even if it is against my known. And yes, yes, my I'm just afraid, but I do want to... The truth is I really don't need anything except to do the will of the one true God, honestly. I'm, I'm floored by the presence of presence. I am in there all the time I try to be present with this present moment with with spirit always and whenever I get down to it I realize yes I am afraid dearly dearly afraid to spend all of my money all of my family's money I can steal from family friends all these people's money that I am investing into this company into this movie and I'm so afraid I am so afraid and I don't want to do it really. Not this guy. Not, not my little ego. Not my little ego. Not that guy. Not the small self. The small self does not want to do this movie. Not at all. Not even close. Honestly, I'm so scared. I have to start a documentary about the making of the movie and then a podcast about the making of the making of because. I'm afraid that I'm going to spend the money in vain and lose all of it. And I need to have a backup plan. So if I make a documentary about me failing, that could be okay. But if I don't do that, then I have no net safety net and I'm freaking out because I'm an artist. I don't, I'm trying to, I'm learning this business stuff, man. I'm learning the LLC stuff. I'm learning the tax stuff. I'm learning insurance. I'm learning this lawyer stuff. Oh man, I got lawyers. I'm legit, but it's like, whoa, man, things, everything costs so much money in production. And I could just turn my soups into novels. Well, another safety net. <laughs> another safety net. Because that's, that's, you just got to be business oriented. When you're spending your own money on your own art, you got to have a business sense. The tr- and getting back to God, getting back to God, I always get back to God, uh, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, uh, I am just doing the, his will, and so I, I could write it into a novel, but that's not what I'm supposed to do right now. I'm supposed to spend this money that I've saved, that I've got investors for, this company. I'm supposed to make this thing. I'm supposed to do this thing. And that's the truth. That's all I know, and I know it to be true. And then I'm probably going to fail and it'll be an interesting documentary. <laughs> no. Um, but getting back to God, yes. So I'm making a movie that is in the faith genre. Yeah, I'm Christian and I love movies. And so I'm going to make a faith movie. It might not be for a typical faith audience. I don't know. I, honestly, I'm just going to try to do the best I can with it. And um be understanding of the market, but also realize that I need to make it a great movie first and foremost. And that's the thing. I need to make it a, an amazing movie. It's a comedy. Ha 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 ha. It's going to be funny. Um, not that that was funny, but the movie is going to be very funny and it's going to work within a faith genre as well. I probably, yeah, PG 13, but that's not the point. The point is a lot of faith movies, unfortunately, aren't they don't work always as movie movies. And I, I, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and yet I can't watch some of these movies because they don't work as movies. They work in the genre. I mean, they're like some of the horror movies. Like horror movies, like most of the horror movies I can't get through, you know, uh, because of this, that, and the other. But, so, oh man, there's some, some faith movies that are amazing. I mean, obviously, Passion of the Christ is an amazing movie. Um, I really loved um, Heaven is for Real. I thought that was fantastic. And I believe that the genre is changing. I mean, even to say like you're in the faith genre, oh, you're evangelical. I'm not evangelical. I don't, I'm not trying to turn anybody's, anybody's beliefs into this or that or change them or whatever. 
I'm just speaking my truth that is being given to me by truth itself. And every time I do it, I realize more and more, yes, I just need to continue to be with God. And God's telling me, okay, work in this faith genre that is ever-changing, that is finding its voice, that is, yes, labeled as this one-way evangelical and not that good of movies, but I, okay, whatever. You know what? Just like I would jump into the horror genre and try to change it up a little bit, try to mix it up, try to try to make things unique. And me, in that genre, well, I'm going to do that with faith. I'm going to do that with faith. And I'm so excited. I really am. I really am excited. Because the film medium has always been exciting. Even if it's changing and becoming a different thing now. The medium of film, the con I mean, watching... Uh, even if you don't like feature films, I get it. Feature films have changed. I get it. But you probably are obsessed with television shows. You know that, that TV shows, that there's an aspect in your brain, the same aspect in your brain that you have friends live in. The show friends lives in. <laughs> your TV characters are like your actual friends. That's how your brain interprets them. Yeah, that's how powerful the medium of film is. And that's what I'm going to try to work in. And if I fail, okay, I'm going to write a novel. <laughs> And I'll lose all this money. And I'll have a good documentary about it. <laughs> Safety net. You got to think in layers. Oh. The motion picture. The motion picture. All right. Well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Because, yeah, I'm making this movie. And it's going to be a fun ride. And I'm going to be continuing to talk about all kinds of topics. And bringing on all kinds of interesting people to talk about all kinds of topics. And I'm really excited about it. And this is all for profit. The movie's for profit. The show is for profit. It's all for profit. And um, I'm excited to, to have you keep listening. And um, yeah, man, I'm excited to see what happens. Bring aboard. Failure or success. Failure or success. It's going to be a wild ride. All right. Much love to all. And let's end with a prayer. A little prayer that goes like this. Amen. <laughs>